Hello and welcome to PsychBoost. In this video, we'll be looking at nature versus nurture. We'll be finding what nature is, talking about how it's the role of hereditary forces, so biological factors, and we'll be defining the role of nurture, the role of environmental factors. We'll talk about how our behavior is a result of either nature or nurture, but as nature and nurture is a debate, we'll talk about the relative importance or combination of both of these factors. So to start off, let's make very clear that the nature-nurture debate is a debate. It's an argument about to what extent behaviour is determined due to the influence of hereditary factors, so genes, or environmental factors, so experiences, or the relative importance, the relative combination of both. You'd find very few psychologists coming down completely on a nature side of the argument or completely down on a nurture side of the argument. However, they might favour one more than the other. For example, here are three figures from history who did actions that might be seen as compassionate, evil, or very intelligent. And as psychologists, we might debate how much of this was due to their biological factors. Say, for example, was Einstein born intelligent? Or how much of it was down to the education that Einstein had as a child? There are two schools of philosophy on this. We have John Locke, who's an empiricist, and we have Descartes, who is a nativist. As you can see from the dates when these philosophers were active, this is a very old debate. Descartes, the nativist, suggests that some aspects of human behaviour are innate. We're born with forms of behaviour, which we inherit from our parents. Whereas Locke took the opposite view, that when you were born, your brain was empty. It was like a blank slate, waiting for experiences to happen, which would then be recorded on this blank slate. And Locke used the Latin for blank slate, tabula rasa. Let's break this down between nature and nurture. So nature links to nativists like Descartes. They assume that biological hereditary factors are far more important in determining behavior, that you're born with knowledge already inside you, so your knowledge is innate. A lot of the studies that we do in psychology show a biological origin for behavior, like genetic evidence for schizophrenia, if we talk about evolutionary argument for make preferences in relationships, and if we talk about aggression as being the result of imbalances of the neurotransmitters dopamine and serotonin, or maybe an imbalance of testosterone, they're quite strongly linked to our genetics. So we'd be given a nature explanation for aggressive behaviour. So on the other side, as I mentioned, John Locke was an empiricist. Empiricists are saying that our learning experiences are far more important in the resulting behaviour. We're not born with knowledge, but knowledge comes from our interaction with the world. Now, psychology studies that would agree with the empiricist worldview are social learning theory. So, for example, the Bobo doll study demonstrated that children could be taught to behave aggressively to a stimulus. And, of course, the behaviour studies by Skinner, by Pavlov, also demonstrate that behaviour comes from an interaction with the environment, from learning what behaviours result in good outcomes. So that's a brief outline of what nature is and a brief outline of what nurture is, linking back to the original philosophers and give an indication about where it might link to from other areas of psychology that we've looked at. The nature-nurture debate also does link to determinism. Be careful if we need to talk about nature-nurture not to fall into a determinist answer, but we can certainly link to it. So both the nature and the nurture arguments are deterministic, but they link to completely different factors when explaining how behaviour is determined. So of course psychologists who explain behaviour is due to nature factors are saying we are biologically determined to act in a certain way due to our biology. Whereas those psychologists coming from a nurture point of view will say our environment causes us to behave in a certain way, therefore it's environmental determinism. So an interesting place to have this argument might be the explanation for aggression. Now there's a lot of research in aggression which suggests that males are more aggressive than females and throughout human history and across cultures males have been seen to be especially aggressive. Now, is this due to evolutionary pressures, which would link to hereditary? Or is it that we have societies, which in some way reinforce male violence, which would mean males are violent due to environmental determinism? One interesting way we can try and pull apart whether a behaviour is based on nurture effects or nature effects is by the use of a twin study. So we've got monozygotic twins and dizygotic twins. We know that monozygotic twins have 100% matching DNA. Whereas dizygotic twins have about 50% of their DNA in common. Monozygotic twins and dizygotic twins are the same age. They tend to share the same household, the same education, the same diet. 
So any differences we see between monozygotic twins and dizygotic twins in behaviours, we might suggest a result of their genetic similarity. Now we can measure the similarity of twins by looking at the concordance rate. What's the likelihood if one twin has a disorder or shows a behaviour that the other twin will do as well? So this concordance rate, if it's higher in monozygotic twins and dizygotic twins, we would suggest there's a nature effect there. And it has been shown for schizophrenia that monozygotic twins do have a higher concordance rate than dizygotic twins. But it isn't 100%. If schizophrenia was a purely genetic disorder, purely nature, then if one twin had schizophrenia, the other twin would have schizophrenia. Such as, for example, a concordance rate of blue eyes is 100%. If one twin has blue eyes, then the other monozygotic twin will also have blue eyes. So we can see there with the development of something as complex as schizophrenia, there must be an interaction between nature and nurture effects. So most psychologists don't take a dichotomous view. So they don't take a one or the other approach. They have an interactionalist view. The idea that nature and nurture factors both work together and influence in behaviour. Now one way this can work is through the diffusive stress model. We can suggest that a certain genetic setup might actually give you a high risk factor to a particular disorder, let's say for schizophrenia. But you need a certain environmental trigger in order to start that schizophrenia off. So you could have two twins that have the same genes. One develops schizophrenia but one doesn't because one person has the environmental experiences in order to trigger it. We can also see this in a genetic explanation for aggression when we look at the short variant of the MOA gene. Many people have the short variant MOA gene, but it's seen with those people with a traumatic childhood are then more likely to go on and be aggressive in later life. Suggesting that the short variant MOA gene gives people a vulnerability to aggression. And one other suggestion for the interaction between nature and nurture, or biology and environment, is something called epigenetics. Now epigenetics is the idea that of course you're born with a set genetic code, and generally it'll express itself in one way. However, it seems that genes aren't all activated at birth, or genes express themselves in one particular way, unless there is an environmental effect. And this environmental effect can then change the way that these genes are interpreted. And so environmental effects could be stuff like smoking, or it could be diet related. It's even suggested that these changes due to environment can then go on to affect the offspring of those people who have been affected. So that's an interesting thing to consider. If something as simple as your diet could go on to affect the behaviours of your children in the future. So I hope you enjoyed this Psychboost video. Please, if you haven't already, click subscribe. And if you enjoyed this video, give me a like. If you have any questions at all, pop them in the comment box and I'll try and get back to you. If you'd like the free resources that come with this course, I put the posters and some other things into this Dropbox link. Until the next video.